Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 657. PMS. You are really not crazy. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, one that has been my favorite subject for over 40 years, and that is about PMS. And the title, I titled this PMS, You're Really Not Crazy. Um, and I'd like to start with just giving you an example of a, a story that is told to me over and over again by either patients who experience PMS or patients whose daughters experience P PMS and they're looking for an answer. Um, two weeks ago, one of uh, my pellet patients, my hormone patients who is menopausal came in and after we talked about her hormones, she said, I have to ask you a question. My daughter is experiencing terrible PMS. She is, it is ruining her life. It's damaging her relationship with her husband. She feels awful half of, half of the month. And she goes to doctors and they're giving her psychiatric drugs, antidepressants, things that are not working for her. All they do is decrease her sex drive. And she doesn't have a sex drive anyway. <laughs> so I ask, how old is she? And generally people with PMS are anywhere between beginning of, of having periods to menopause. So it's somewhere before menopause. It doesn't happen afterwards. It is a cyclic problem, something that happens, you know, um, in the second half of the cycle month, not the, not the calendar month, but the cycle month. Day one would be the first day you bleed. And then day 14 is the first day that PMS begins until you start bleeding again. So in a 28-day cycle, it's the second half. But patients will tell me that they are angry, they lose their temper, they're irritable, their husband, they don't like their husbands during two weeks out of the month. They, uh, they know something's wrong, but they don't know what it is. And they've gone to many doctors who just tell them, well, you know, you need to see a psychiatrist, which is not the problem here. The problem here is a hormonal deficiency, and the hormone we're talking about starts with a P2. It's progesterone. So PMS is the abnormality that occurs when a patient or a person, a woman, has not ovulated very well during the month. Ovulation occurs around day 14. If you don't ovulate or you don't ovulate well, you don't make a lot of progesterone. And therefore, you don't have progesterone for the second two weeks of your cycle. And that makes us feel all of those things that patients uh, feel and, are, and tell me about or tell their doctors about and complain about when they are experiencing this. It's devastating for people because it's, it's like Mrs. Jekyll, Miss, Mrs., uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mrs. Hyde. Basically, they're two different people at two halves of the cycle, and it is something that should be treated adequately by some kind of met medical intervention. So when I, was, when I was first started training, it was 1985. It was the year my daughter was born, so I can remember that, or st started private practice. I was in a uh, working class kind of environment, neighborhood, and I had tons of patients who were very stressed, who didn't ov always ovulate, and had terrible PMS, and they would explain this to me, and I was never trained on how to treat PMS. In fact, PMS was considered in medical, the medical world as a psychiatric disease. Since 1985, nothing's really changed. <laughs> and I, I have a hard time accepting that, but PMS patients are considered crazy. Now, I've said this before in other health casts, 
the default diagnosis for a woman who has something that a doctor doesn't know what it is or how to treat it is that they're crazy. And that, and only women, this only applies to women, it doesn't apply to men. men, men have problems and maybe the doctor will say, I can't fix that or I don't know what it is, I'll send you to a specialist. But for women it's just, you're crazy, don't bother me anymore. And that is insufficient, it is not good medicine, it is not good care of human beings. It's terrible for a GYN who specializes in women's diseases to not know how to treat PMS. So when I was first starting practice, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to treat it. Nobody had trained me on how to treat it. None of the books told me what to do except give somebody an antidepressant, send them to a psychiatrist. That was it. So when I found my, my way to manage people is, made, uh, manage a patient is, if I don't know what's wrong with them, then I try to find out what's wrong, what is the reason they have these symptoms. So I, I depended on a pharmacist who was in my building, and his name was Pete Huseman. He's a compounding pharmacist. He's a pharmacist that did everything a normal pharmacist would do, but he also compounded medicines out of the raw ingredients so that he could make a different dose or he could make a different medicine than was in the already manufactured form. So I went to him and I said, do you, do you know what's happening here? Because I think there's something happening with hormones in the second half of the cycle. And he said, aha, you're right. He said, it is a lack of progesterone and we can treat that. And I said, we don't have a natural progesterone. We just have Provera. That's the only thing that's approved by the FDA. And Provera does not help PMS. It makes it worse. So he said, yes, I know, but I can make progesterone. I can take natural progesterone and I can put it in a vaginal suppository, a rectal suppository, a sublingual tablet, a trochee that you suck on. And we, you can give that to your patients. You can even inject progesterone in oil into uh, a patient's hip for the second half of the cycle every day. I said, well, I don't think people want to inject themselves every day, half the month. So maybe we should try something that's a little easier that they could manage themselves. And that's what I did. So I went... I, I, I went way off standard of care because there was no good standard of care for this, for this problem because the standard of care didn't really fix it, didn't help it. So um, when I started using the progesterone, I'd say to the patient, you know what, you've already tried antidepressants, they don't work. I don't have another answer, let's just try this. This may not work for you, and lo and behold, it worked. And they were normal the whole month. And they also became more fertile. And their, and their periods got a lot lighter and a lot more controllable. That's what progesterone does. Progesterone helps us sleep. Progesterone is the hormone of calmness. It's the hormone that we have a very high level of when we're pregnant, so it makes us kind of not as um, emotional, although emotional in some ways. Sometimes we're more emotional in others because we also have a lot of estrogen. But progesterone also manages our periods and keeps our periods from being heavy. It makes them more regular. If you get progesterone from day 14 through 28, that's ideal. Then you have a, a regular period after that. So I started always prefacing this with, this is not standard. This is something that I'm doing because I've talked to a pharmacist who believes this will work, and it did. And over and over and over and over again, uh, my, my St. Louis practice treated PMS, and it made people so much better. And they didn't have to see a psychiatrist, and no one called them crazy anymore. And they had somebody who listened and actually treated them. Now, there is an, a, an organization that manages all OBGYNs, and it's called the American College of OBGYN. It's a huge organization. It makes decisions slowly. And after research happens, they, the decision on how OBGYN should practice takes a very long time to change, even when it's obvious in the research that something would work or the FDA has approved something, eh, it takes a long time for the American College to actually turn around and actually uh, move it. But remember, 1985 is when I started looking into this and found a treatment 
1999, I took my reboards. I had already taken boards in um, 1986 or 87, and I took them again in 1999. And a question on the test was, is PMS a psychiatric disease that should be treated with antidepressants? The right answer was yes, but that's not the right answer. And they still have not revised what they tell doctors to do for PMS. They have um, changed a little bit. They've told people that PMS can be treated by putting people on the pill, and that does work, but not everyone can take the pill, and not everyone feels good on the pill. And the pill decreases sex drive, so that's not good. Progesterone doesn't. Um, the pill does help periods. But if you think about the benefit of giving people progesterone who don't have progesterone, it is not just PMS that it fixes. It fixes irregular cycles. It fixes heavy menstrual cycles. It fixes infertility. In fact, infertility patients, once they've if they're in IVF, once they've had their embryo transplanted, they have to take shots of pure progesterone every day until they find out if the, if the embryo has actually attached to the uterus. Um, it also prevents miscarriages because many miscarriages occur because of lack of progesterone from the, the area where the egg came out is called the corpus luteum, and that's what makes the progesterone. Sometimes the eggs are uh, ovulated, they're good eggs, but they don't leave a good corpus luteum, not enough progesterone. So the egg can get fertilized, but it just, it doesn't make it through the uterus because there's not enough progesterone to make the lining stable to hold the embryo. So if you don't have enough progesterone, you have a period. And it's as if you were never, uh, you never had a fertilized um, embryo. So uh, the other things that... Um, that P the other problem that PMS is also associated with is polycystic ovaries. People who have polycystic ovaries, another, uh, another hormonal and ovarian um, problem that OBGYN should be taking better care of, um, the pa patients that have a, a lot of cysts on their ovaries, they also usually have low thyroid, they usually have um, Poor ovulation, they don't ovulate, but maybe every three months, and if they and they don't ovulate well, it's hard for them to get pregnant. Uh, they usually gain weight. They have a lot of uh, adrenal male hormone production, so they get body hair and thin head hair and sometimes facial hair and acne. So it's, it's a real problem, but it is also associated with PMS. So after you have all those symptoms, then you don't feel good half the month. That's really a devastating condition as well. And it is, um, it is, has PMS kind of as a, one of its symptoms. And it should be treated with progesterone for those symptoms. So if you think about it, find, finding an answer for a problem that has, that is not standard of care, meaning everybody doesn't do it, is a little bit dangerous. As long as you know and I knew that it was not dangerous for my patients. It was dangerous for me stepping outside the normal standard of care, but I knew that this was not a dangerous treatment, that it was going to help many people, and I was hoping that it would be embraced down the line by the American College of OBGYN. I still have not found that. So I still, at 2024, just think how many years that was, I still have my patients come in and say, would you take care of my daughter? Well, that's not what I do anymore. I take care of people who are over 40, who are menopausal, who need pellet treatment with testosterone and maybe estrogen and for menopause. And I, I also take care of men who need testosterone for aging. My practice is about aging and not about people trying to get pregnant. And this, this should be standard for all OBGYNs. So unfortunately, it's not. So it's a little hard to find um, OBGYNs or other doctors who will take care of PMS, it's hard for me to find people to refer my patients to because OBGYN is a very difficult specialty. Everybody, everybody in it is sleep deprived. They, are run, they deliver babies for 24 hours and then they go to the office and they see patients for 12 and they're exhausted and then they go home, sleep and do it again. I mean, it's, it, I have a lot of compassion for those 
pay people who still do that. But still, it's not a good lifestyle for being able to listen to a patient's problems and then and then treat it and help them. It, it's just really a difficult specialty. I didn't know that until I realized the other specialties weren't quite so hard. So one of the things I haven't talked about that you do need to know are the other symptoms of PMS besides the ones I've listed. Besides irritability and depression that happens just two weeks out of the month, it, it has to be in that second two weeks, women complain of bloating, weight gain, cravings, anger, anxiety, migraine headaches, and some other kind of individual symptoms that aren't always related to PMS but can be individual for that patient. So those are other things you can look for if you're trying to decide if this is an issue that you have or your daughter has or your sister. Um, but once again, it only happens half the month. If, these, if you have problems that are going on all the time that sound a lot like this, uh, in general, that could be depression. It could be anxiety. It could be something that a psychiatrist would have to deal with. But if, you, if it's just half the month, that's your key. Um, other treatments besides natural bioidentical progesterone um, include birth control pills. So they shut down the system of ovulation, but they give the patient estrogen and progesterone all the time. So there's no up and down, and there's enough progesterone to sustain, um, to sustain the uh, lining of the uterus, but also to keep uh, the brain happy with some progesterone. Um, Lupron is used for endometriosis. It works by pu putting a woman into menopause. So the endometriosis dies or, or dissolves. It doesn't work all the time. However, it often stops PMS because it stops periods, and so does menopause stop PMS. But there are other symptoms that are related to menopause that Lupron brings on that are even worse than PMS. So I don't always re recommend that unless the PMS and the anger part of the PMS is so severe. Uh, and I, I have rarely used that. Um, what doesn't work is the drug Provera. Provera turns into estrogens in the liver, and actually we give it for heavy bleeding, and we give it, we used to give it for menopause, I don't give it, but OBGYNs do. Um, but it turns into estrogen and, and estrone as it goes through the first pass of the liver, it's an oral pill. So when that happens, then the estrogen level goes up and there's no progesterone to balance it and PMS gets worse. So Provera is not an answer. Prometrium is the new drug that's not recommended necessarily for PMS. It's recommended for heavy bleeding or irregular bleeding. Um, and that is a pure progesterone in peanut oil that's taken orally and may be able to work. It doesn't work for everybody. So my recommendation is a progesterone um, troche or sublingual tablet is always the easiest. You just put, before you go to bed, and you only take it at night, progesterone is very relaxing, so you take it before bed, and then it will work all day, but it only relaxes you for the first eight hours. So you take it, you go to bed, and then you're relaxed throughout the night, and the progesterone will balance the estrogen that your body's making. And so the trochees, that you, they're like little lozenges that you suck on, and dissolve, or the sublingual tablets that go under your tongue and dissolve. Those are uh, ideal for people who have severe periods. Oftentimes, uh, I will, uh, I used to recommend um, the uh, Prometrium because they have PMS and severe periods, and oftentimes that was necessary to control the periods. So those are the those are the ways that um, I use progesterone for PMS. But it's very successful, and it should be something that all OBGYNs do to help their younger patients in so many different ways. But um, mainstream medicine is not very prone to endorse anything that's a bioidentical um, hormone because they can't, they don't feel that it can be. Um, always the same dose from every different pharmacy. I mean, yeah, I know that that's an issue, but something, something's better than nothing. And uh, in general, I've been very happy with the compounding pharmacies that we've worked with. They seem to be very stable in terms of what dose, if, they, if, 
if we write a dose, that's the dose our patients get. And so I've been pleased with how that has progressed over the last 20 years of using compounding pharmacies. So I don't have a problem with that. Hopefully some of my um, OBGYN friends uh, don't have a problem with that and will take care of uh, PMS. But you, have, you have really have to look and see if that doctor, the doctor you're going to, is going to help you with that particular problem. So ask questions when you make your appointments. Look at their website. Look at what things they state that they treat in their office, because not every OBGYN treats everything. Um, and that's my best advice for you, but there is an answer for this, and you aren't crazy. There really is a hormonal basis for your problem, and it can be taken care of. So I hope this helped you understand some of the problems that we have and your problem and understand some of the solutions. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.